Hello everyone, welcome back to problem 2.15 of David Griffith's Electrodynamics. It's been a little bit of time since I made a video. Um, just the holidays and everything kind of kept me busy. Um, and I think I was just making videos too fast. I was just pumping them out like, I don't know, sometimes I would pump out like five a day and upload five at a time. And I think I was just burning myself out too fast. So I think I'm going to stick to a rather consistent upload schedule. And at most, probably only upload like two videos a week. So, you know, it'll progress by slowly. But um, eventually, you know, I'll have uh, a lot of these problems solved. <clears throat> and up for, you know, all kinds of physics students to watch and see. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and just solve this problem. So the problem statement says that we have a thick spherical shell um, and it carries a charge density of rho which is equal to k over r squared. So it depends on the radius or one over the radius squared. And r lies between is greater than or equal to a but less than or equal to b. <clears throat> and so a is the radius of the inner sphere here. I tried to draw a figure and then b is the radius of the outer sphere which contains this inner sphere. And it's a spherical shell so the space between um, this sphere and this sphere is empty and hollow space essentially. And we're asked to find the electric field in the three potential regions we have where R, you know, R less than A, so within the inner sphere, the electric field between the two spheres, and then the electric field outside of the entire uh, uh, configuration and free space. So let's go ahead and just quickly write down Gauss's law. So Gauss's law tells us that the electric flux through some surface, uh, E dot dA, sorry, is equal to the, the, the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. That's Gauss's law. So let's consider for the region R less than A, what do we have? Well, the charge, all the charge that is in our system here is all contained in this space here between the two shells. Um, and so there's no charge uh, inside of this inner shell where R is less than A. So that means that the charge enclosed inside of any sort of Gaussian surface you can think of inside of this uh, shell here would be zero. And if this is zero, then the flux is zero, um, and therefore making the electric field zero. So we can easily write down that the electric field is zero. Uh, for R less than A. So now let's consider the region where R is greater than A but less than B. <clears throat> so for this we will have some charge and since it's not like a, you know depending on the Gaussian surface you choose depending on how far you know, how big the radius of the Gaussian surface you choose is. If you decide to make it closer to the inner sphere or closer to the outer sphere, that will change the amount of charge enclosed you have. So we're going to have to do an integral here to calculate a uh, what the charge enclosed in this region is. And so the charge enclosed is just the integral over the, the volume uh, of this space here of the charge density. So we're going to have this triple integral for the volume where phi runs from 0 to 2 pi, theta runs from 0 to pi, and our integration variable is going to be r prime. So r prime is going to run from a to um, whatever radius we choose for our Gaussian surface r. So from, from it's going to run from the radius of this inner sphere all the way out to whatever we choose for our Gaussian surface r. And then k is just a constant, so we can pull out the k and this is going to be 1 over r squared, r prime squared, since that's going to be our integration variable, and then dr prime. 
Um, oh, and I'm forgetting, sorry, sine of theta. I should have not and forgot that. Sine of theta, d theta. I forgot all this. d phi. Uh, there should be, a, I'm going to write it down here, d theta. I forgot uh, the rest of the, the dv here. Rho, this should, should have been rho dv. That's my bad. I forgot to write that. Um, I kind of just wrote the volume down here. I just completely forgot. It's been a while. <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're moving right along. So let's just go ahead and do this. So we have the two pi. Um, so we have the charge and close. So two pi, k two pi from this integral. Uh, sine of theta, d theta um, from zero to pi is just gonna be two. That's times another two. Um, and then we have, uh, oh, I forgot here, there's a, another r squared also from the, um, the dv, the differential volume factor. So if you recall, like dv and spherical coordinates um, is like r squared dr sine of theta d theta d phi. Or you can write it like r squared sine of theta dr diff theta d phi. So I forgot to add an extra factor of r squared. So that actually cancels out the r prime squared there. And so actually what we get is just r prime evaluated from a to r. And so this ends up being 4 pi k from r uh, times r minus a all over, well, that's the charge enclosed, but the electric field, so well, I'm jumping ahead of myself here. So this is the charge enclosed here. So if we plug this back into the equation for Gauss's law, we have um, the flux through the surface. So we can take advantage of symmetry here. We're gonna have four pi uh, r squared, equal to four pi k r minus a over epsilon naught. And so the pi cancels, the four cancels. Um, and so we find that the electric field will be equal to k r minus a um, over epsilon naught. Um, and the r squared on the bottom, and the r hat direction. Let me just kind of circle that in. All right, so that is the electric field and the region here between the two inner spheres. And now, if I have some extra paper, let's quickly do for the region uh, R is greater than B, so outside of the entire system. And this is gonna be quite easy because we can basically take advantage of the last part we did. And since the charge only exists within the area between the two spheres, all that's gonna change in this equation here is our um, bounds on our r integral here. So in the last time we had r prime going from a to r, where r was just some arbitrary surface between these two spheres. But you know, when, when we're choosing a point outside of these spheres, all the charge exists within this entire thing. So we have to integrate over the entire volume now. And that's gonna go from a to b. So then our answer here, instead of going from r minus a, it'll be, B minus A because all that's going to change is this upper bound on integration is going to be B instead of R. And so our answer uh, stays exactly the same, except this B here is going to change to, uh, this R here is going to change to a B. So the electric field there, write that down, is equal to k b minus a 
divided by epsilon naught r squared on the bottom, and then the direction is going to be in the radial direction. All right. Cool. And quickly to finish up problem 2.15, um, the book asks us to plot the magnitude of the electric field as a function for R in the case that B is equal to two times A. So, just real quick, I'm going to draw just a plot here, just a quick plot. So this uh, axis represents the magnitude of electric field, and this axis is the radius. So, meaning, and this is the origin, so... Essentially, let's mark a place for A. So all the way out to A, if you recall, the electric field we found was zero. So the magnitude of the field is zero, so we just stay on the x-axis, or the r-axis here, up into A. I'm going to mark a place for B. So this region is inside of the two, between the two spheres. And then this region and beyond is outside of the whole thing. So the plot, um, if you take the function and you plot it on a graphing calculator or something, what you get is something like this. Um, and then once it hits this, then the factor of R uh, on top goes away and it's a constant on top and it's just a inverse square function. So it kind of drops off. I'm not going to do this. That drops off like this. And just goes off like that. So that's sort of what the uh, the electric field looks like um, on, a, on a plot for this specific problem. So if you guys enjoyed this video or you found this helpful, feel free to subscribe and leave me comments for suggestions um, um, or, you know, just letting me know that it helps you out. And yeah, so thank you guys for your time, and I will see you guys on the next video. Bye.